Hey guys, we're back out in the greenhouse. It's the third week of August. We're in the early stages of flowering here. You can see the multi-strain plant here. The lemon sour diesel has actually started earlier, started flowering, you know, maybe a week or even two weeks before everything else. So that definitely seems to be an early strain. Just starting to get going there. And uh, because of that, I guess it's more expressing more of like indica characteristics here. It's also quite a lot shorter and didn't stretch nearly as much as the ones you can see to the left of it here. The difference in height, about a foot already, and these will probably get going even more. So uh, I guess one, um, one uh, conclusion you can make from this observation is that the fact that this has started to flower so much earlier than these is that you can say that this strain can handle higher or larger amount of light during its flowering stage. Whereas these guys are looking for, you know, 13 to 12 hours. Maybe this one can handle 14 hours or maybe even a little bit more. So we still have some of that issue I pointed out before um, with the curling like this and the tips starting to kind of, I don't know, die off or slow down. And you know, this section kind of got affected, but the uh, lemon sour diesel over here, I don't know, either outgrew it or really didn't get it as bad. Um, you know, this one looks like it's going to be perfectly fine. And uh, again, I'm not quite sure what that is. I mean, at first I thought it was deficiency or some type of, uh, you know, maybe bacterial fungal infection. But what, from what I've heard, rust and mites have been a real big issue in Oregon this year because of the heat, I'm guessing. And uh, we still haven't gotten the rains yet. And the forecast is saying probably another two weeks of high 90s here, actually going into September. So, I mean, that's kind of a good for outdoor cannabis, I guess you can say, but it's also been really good for mites. So we got some watermelon set recently. I went away for a week and it's crazy how everything has grown in that time. Um, our approach graft here, you can also see we have an early strain right here. And not surprisingly, let's see, where's the tag for that? That's Oregon diesel, so another diesel. Probably shares some genetics with the lemon sour diesel. And uh, some indica quality in those two has make them start flowering at a higher amount of sunlight. Might still actually take a couple cuttings from these. I don't think it's too late. It would probably be too late for the diesels here, but not for everything else. And let's see, here's a, there should be a Blue City diesel here as well. I think that's this one. And so this diesel is a bit later starting. Or is that, no, okay, sorry, that's this one here with the purple stripes on the stems and the purple petioles. That's the Blue City Diesel. So maybe that has Blueberry or Blue Dream or something in it, I'm guessing. And then this one is Clementine. And then we have Fire G and Gorilla Glue over here and some other stuff I don't remember and don't feel like looking at it. Let's look at some watermelons instead. We've got a couple nice ones here. You can see both of these had a vine on top of them and it's made this kind of a trough. That one's looking like a butt. <laughs> butt crack. Yeah, so peppers are doing well, lots of sets, eggplants are just getting going. Again, I got everything in kind of late this year, so it's been quite a while. Oh, and here's uh, probably our first signs of powdery mildew. 
Yeah. Always gets the melons first. Second will be the cucumbers. Anything in the cucurbit family. And eventually, cannabis. But don't have to worry about that. I resisted it quite well last year. We didn't have any issue with it whatsoever. Remember, the spores are pretty much around all the time. So this beef steak, which I think is pineapple, it's been doing really well. Harvested a bunch already. Some more coming on here, some really large ones. And they're still picking out the side shoots. Yeah, and you can see I took this one into a two stem. Um, the spring grown ones are looking good. This is Oregon lemon. Yeah, next to it is the one I liked better, which is Sherbert, with these really, really thick stems. And um, this branch over here is actually a graft, but I can't, I don't have any record of what it is. Unfortunately, I think it's one of the, one of the two that we grew way back when that I didn't quite like either. Whitaker Blues or Orange Julius, but we'll see what comes of it. But the Sherbert is really good. The one thing I'm wondering about this plant is that since the rootstock is this lemon sour diesel over here that's starting so early, what happens when that finishes? Will that trigger the rest of the plant to finish early or it's probably just or to just stop? I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see what happens. I'm guessing these will just keep going with their um you know their cycle. They're obviously quite a feather behind because they have different genetics. And um I think it should turn out alright actually. You can see the beans have really taken over the little trellis here. There's some more of that pineapple. So this um, yellow cherry tomato, which was actually a volunteer, so it's self-sown, uh, is doing really well. I'm quite, uh, quite amazed by these flower trusses it's putting on. They just get larger and larger, and you can see it, this one starts down here keeps on splitting and splitting and splitting and uh, you know if the plant can support it these kind of apical points can just keep growing and growing eventually they might put out a sucker vegetative growth actually but this one doesn't do that too much this one actually puts them out um, in the middle of the leaves like right here was a sucker So the cucumber's been doing really well since I was gone. A bunch have kind of gone over. You can see this ridiculous one. It's probably still going to be good to eat. There's another one here. There's a couple of watermelons. Some tomatoes. This is a uh, Japanese black trifle. Yeah, so a bunch have gone way over. In fact, this one over here has gone so over, I'm just gonna leave it for seed. And you can see the training and trimming has worked out really well. We're getting lots of female flowers and multiples at each node, actually. Like, look at this. It's gonna be at least four there, and they kind of come in succession. And that's because we switched to uh, second order growth by topping it. All right, so I'm out in the asparagus patch. 
Uh, I just wanted to show you an update on that. We cut them down recently in August to try for a fall harvest. And as you guys saw in one of the previous episodes, they actually came up in very short time, about six days. And uh, this was one of the two old crowns that we did this on. And I harvested five spears off of this in the fall here. And after that, it's already grown one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more spears since then that are already like four and a half foot tall. So that's worked really well. And uh, this was the other one, the older, also older crown that we did this with. And you can see that's also growing a bunch of really healthy growth. And so since then, I've done that with all the other crowns we have here. And they've all done exactly the same thing and have come back stronger than they were during the main growing season. So you can see one over there, there's one there, one there one here and a bunch more over there under the currents so um, being perennial monocots I'm not sure if we're kind of uh, what we're doing here is breaking the dormancy of next year's growth points and getting stimulating to grow this year uh, is it gonna affect next year's 2018's growth I'm not sure or will this growth just give more energy to the crown, to the roots, and produce more growth tips to grow in 2018? We'll just have to wait and see. It'll be kind of interesting to find out. Alright guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.